Welcome to the Weekly Whiff, episode number five, I believe it is. I think so, yes. We're on five now. Yeah. Five. We're halfway to the celebration mark. <laughs> celebration mark. I am joined, as always, by my good friend Sean from 28 Posts Later. He follows the blog. You should. He, he writes the blog. You should follow it. And I'm Pete, and I run the Weekly Whiff, and this is our podcast that we do together. Uh, but Sean does most of the work, and I'm just here along for the, light, along for the ride. Yep. So, welcome. And today, we will be discussing <clears throat> Star Wars... Fallen Order by EA Games, a relatively recent video game. When did this come out? Last year, I think. Towards really? the end of last year, because yeah. I remember there was a lot of people upset that it wasn't going to get nominated for a Game Awards because it came out on the day, I think, or something. But it was never going to get nominated for Game Awards because it's not that good of a game, but yeah. Yes, well, we'll get into that later. If you're first tuning in or if you haven't heard us before, please do chuck a follow, like, subscribe, all the rest of that kind of crap. I really feel like a corporate shield. And yeah, let's get into it. This is, uh, this is Sean's party. So Sean, what do we got, man? Fallen right, Order. Well, okay, so Star Wars Fallen Order, I recommended it. It's a Star Wars game. I'm not much of a Star Wars nerd, really. Like I, I think the first original movies are decent and then that's about it. I think yeah. the rest are kind of shit and that's my stance on Star Wars. I'm not too much, in, I'm not too interested in following the law. I played um, Force Unleashed when I was younger as well, which we'll probably talk about at some point. But, we definitely will talk about it. <laughs> But um, Fallen Order was a surprise to me because I picked up the game mainly out of boredom and I had nothing else to do. So I was like, fuck it, I've got nothing to do for a month or so. I always play this game. And I I had problems with the gameplay itself, but I greatly enjoyed its story. And I think it's my favorite Star Wars story in terms of what I've consumed. And we'll talk about that more in depth. But Pete, what, did, what were your initial thoughts on the game before we delve into the specifics? Well, I was actually going to ask Hayley Winston first because I think we jumped the gun a little bit. All right, well. Yeah, just um, <laughs> messing the order up a little bit. Well, here, but, this episode's uh, fucked. Yeah, it's <laughs> fine, man. It was already trash. It's all, it's all, it's great. Um, I spent most of the week maining Fallen Order and binging Castlevania like a maniac on Netflix. That's been my week. Yeah. So I, I, I've just come off just finishing Fallen Order, in fact, about half an hour ago. So I'm, I'm, I'm still a bit blown away by it. But how about you? How's your week been? Just before um, we get into everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All good. I... I've been pretty chill, honestly. I've been playing Resident Evil all, like, week. Like, the first, the first game in HD release, trying to get ready for Resident Evil 3. I've been watching a bit of mo- um, Scream as well, because I'm writing something about that at the time. But by the time this episode comes out, I hope that piece will be out. And the Resident Evil 3 probably would have come out by now as well, and I probably would have already written about it. But, yeah, I've just been getting ready for that and making new content. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's basically well. my week. <laughs> awesome, man. Awesome, awesome. But, yes... To the subject's hand, full order. Your initial thoughts. My initial yeah. thoughts is I don't know what I feel about it um, because I've just come tail end off it. I think it's. Ag- I, I said this before. I'll say it again. It's aggressively okay. It's aggressively it's fine. okay. That's it's fine. that's very fair. It's it's okay. The gameplay has. We can get into the gameplay. We can, de- we can deconstruct the gameplay as we like. But the gameplay is functional. It works sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes not. And the story is, in my mind, pretty slow initially, and then it really, really starts to pick up probably like towards the last of the third of the game. That's my impression. It's a Star Wars story. It's not particularly complex in terms of overarching narrative or plot. I However, would, I would disagree. You would disagree. Yeah. Well, that's right. I, at least how I found it. I yes, saw, that's I, I saw some of the twists being pretty like. Yeah, oh, that's like, expected. And then there's some stuff guys. in there, like, at the end, I just did not see coming at all, and that was pretty sick. So that was nice, but I don't think it redeems, like, the first two-thirds of the game playing through it either, personally. Um, it looks pretty shit, that's for sure. It, it looks amazing. The game is okay. incredibly, like, incredibly nice to look at. The textures, the level, the levels, the level design, something else, but the levels look really nice. Each yeah. planet has its own sort of distinct characteristic and environmental characteristics. Uh, the combat's fine. I have some issues with combat too, but the combat's fun. It's fun. It's fun playing. It is, it is fun, like, video game and playing when you're finding things. I do like that. And I think it's quite grounded as well. I do, I do like how grounded yeah, it is. It's, it's very sort grounded, of your grounded. Force Unleashed esque uh, physics engine where you can just destroy everything around you at any given point. Exactly. Uh, which I miss. But that's not even on there. Yeah, I, 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 overall, I think it's a good game. But I have a lot of issues with it. Like, like basically, yeah. what you said, I think I think we have a cons- I think we have a consensus on it's good, but it's not that good. It's good, yeah. but it's not that amazing. I I adore its story, and yeah. we'll we'll duke it out a bit about the story in a bit, I'm sure. But um, I think the game as a game, it is like it's decent. It's a fun game to play, but I won't like go out and say it's the best thing ever because 
fundamentally it's flawed in a lot of areas like the gameplay itself is very glitchy and that ties into like it's an ea game and i think that's like something that i did want to talk about as well the fact that it's an ea game is pretty big because i would not expect ea to make a game this re- of this level quality it's respawn yeah. Too. well yeah like published and, like by ea but but it's respawn and yeah. i have uh, mixed feelings about Respawn as a company. I, I do what like games have they done? Okay, they've done Titanfall, Titanfall okay. 2. They're also responsible for Apex Legends. Oh, really? Yes, and I'm fairly sure this is their first foray into a... I'm not sure, don't quote me on this, but I'm fairly sure it's their biggest biggest foray into third-person, like, story-based game. Everything else has been multiplayer or had lackluster campaign from what I understand. So, yeah, that's... That is... That is, that is Respawn Entertainment. So I, I think Titanfall 2 is one of the best multiplayer shooters I've ever played in my life. Uh, and I can rail about that for an entire podcast. Okay. But I have not looked much too... I haven't looked too much into Titanfall or anything, but every time I see it, I'm like, it looks like a fun kind of the game. Multiplayer, the gameplay loop in Titanfall is amazing. And I can get into that uh, later uh, for another podcast that yeah. might make you do it. Because it also has a campaign mode, which is also, yeah. also aggressively fine. I mean, we're not restricted to single-player games are only realistic. You can play Titanfall. It's really cheap, and it's like super... Titanfall 2. The second one is yeah. really good. Um, yeah, anyway, but that, that's that's respawn. That's, that's yeah. the company. So um, they have a lot of love for games. They, I think they do care about the the audience. I think they do give a shit. Uh, I think this is a bit of a love letter for them. I think I, I have a feeling that they've always wanted to make a Star Wars game, and now they had the opportunity, they sort of jumped at it. And they're also pretty hot right now because of Apex Legends, which is incredibly popular in yes, uh, yeah. battle royale genre. So yeah, but my thoughts is yeah, it's aggressively fine. It's aggressively okay. It's oh, it's very. Fine, and I just remember like going like I think the first thing I when I saw the trailers for it and order, I heard it was EA and I was like, oh EA, huh? I was really underwhelmed by the trailers, man. I the trailers are shit. All my friends are so like excited for the game, and I always looked at it and like it looks very even just gameplay. I was just watching the gameplay. It's like when you look at that new Avengers game they're going to bring out by Square Enix, and you look at the game, it's like meh, yeah. I don't care. Like, and I saw I saw this you know this new Fall Order Jedi game coming out. It looks so incredible. I was just like. I agree. I, I every, nah, every, it just looks like a really cookie cutter third person. I agree action completely. Version. Every time I saw a trailer, I was always just like, "Okay, I yeah. don't get what the hype's about." But hopefully, it's good. I guess I like a good Star Wars game. Like the fact that it was a single player campaign was what shocked me the most. Like EA's doing a single player campaign. They're they're distributing a game that's going to be single player. That's interesting. <laughs> and there weren't loot boxes either, or any like. I don't think there was many pre-order bonuses. I think you get an orange lightsaber if you pre-ordered the game. Yeah, it's a fancy lightsaber decals and maybe some special outfits slash colors for the shit. It's a new poncho. <laughs> I hate the poncho. <laughs> there is like three ponchos in that game that I don't like hate, basically. Like when I like saw that design, I was like, I can wear that and not be disgusted. I hate ponchos as a general concept. So oh, I, I mean, I, I think agree. the fact that he just wears ponchos and they make you do one for Ilum and you can't, I think you might be able to, but you might not. I, mean, you I, can wore a puncher, I wore a poncho for the snow level and then after that I I kind of like that he has like a bit of a character like that his character is that he just he, like one of his character designs is that he wears ponchos it's different like rather than just wearing a kind of edgelord coat or something it's like okay I, I would go for an edgelord coat over ponchos I don't know <laughs> I, I don't think an edgelord coat would suit Cal too much but um, either way we talked about the surroundings around oh we've talked about the game like and the surrounding things what around it was a critical reception it was very high right Everyone it's pretty yeah, it's pretty well received it was, yeah the fact that it was so well received is what made me end up like caving in and buying it yeah. so I was like okay that's interesting that it's so well received and also like the main thing as well is that everyone was calling it a Dark Souls like game which is very I thought was, I was thinking about it the other day actually I was like fuck we can't get out of this loop of repeating trends we talked about two we talked about a Soulsborne game then we talked about like animated things for like three fucking weeks and now we're talking about another soul like then i'm like all right i'm taking us out of the gutter we're, we're talking about something new yeah. he's this souls like game and i think of all the games that has been accused of being souls like fallen order is probably the most accurate in terms of being called souls like because it is in my opinion very souls like it's not of the depth that a dark souls game or bloodborne game is obviously but you can see the kind of inspiration in terms of structure it's very kind of like there's two others that would line up with that uh, matchup as well there's one called neo Oh, yeah, um, Neo. Yeah, Let, yeah. That's that one about the Irish Geralt looking motherfucker who winds up in Japan and goes around killing demons. Yes, yes. Very similar, yes. very, very similar gameplay loop. And there's another one. Um, <sighs> I've forgotten the name now, which is annoying because it was good for an example. Uh, it was called Hero, not Heroes, but it was, it was something. It was like a. Um, yeah, it's also got the same sort of characteristics. It's more of a sword and sorcery type sort of game. Uh, also, you've got Surge. Surge is another one that has that sort of loop for sure. I don't know if you've seen Surge at all. I don't think so. No, it, it's got a very similar kind of layout, very similar sort of, um, you know, 
gameplay sort of style. Yeah. Like the bosses and then the running to the things and the respawning and, and the souls you have to sort of like you drop and you don't drop all that kind of stuff. Well, yeah. Yeah. So there are, there are like... A oh, there are, but like yeah. there's, there's a very noticeable trend in the media recently Recently, where whenever a game comes out the tar, they call it Souls-like. It's yeah. very frustrating and very rarely did I actually ever call like referred to a game correctly and this is one of the few cases where they did and I don't think so but I think it is I, absolutely it's got like it. it's very basic as a Souls like game but it is very Souls like in terms of like running around killing enemies leveling up and then like going back and spending all your points losing things if you do it's very like cookie cutter Souls born game but it is very clearly the inspiration that they went for and I think it works for the game I just I think the biggest problem I have with the game is that I wish it was less like a Souls-like game and more its own thing and, like, not kind of following the structure of having to hold onto your level up points or, like, or hold onto your experience and then losing it once you get killed or something. It's kind of just... It feels like an added thing that wasn't necessary. And I look at it and I'm like, I don't really fucking care about this. I just can let, If you let me keep the experience, I don't really care. I it's It doesn't add anything to me that I'm losing experience points when I die. Yeah. And I think yeah, I think it's worth pointing to talking about the Souls-like aspects for it because I think it is... It's, biggest problem is that it is a very kind of souls-like game and i don't think it needs to be i think it could have been its own thing and not have souls-like attributes and it would have been fine i think it has a lot more in you've heard of the term metroidvania before yes i have okay right so for those just tuning in or aren't particularly familiar with this um metroids this is from the game metroids metroid etc yeah. etc et and also castlevania so they call they join them together because they have yeah. these very similar level designs and gameplay designs in that you have these areas and then you go through those areas and there's always one spot you can't quite reach because you don't have the abilities or the special movement skills to get there or the particular kind of tool that opens the doors or whatever else and so you have to come back later if you want to unlock that thing and then behind there lies the rest of the game in some cases uh, and I think that's more of what the Fallen Order is going for it has a lot more of that retread uh, opening up new areas and everything else and you can't progress unless you have a, you know that for me is the most ex- obvious example it's a huge gap that you can't jump over yeah, and then you wait until like you have to go back through I guess, like two other planets before you can get to the point where you can do it, or one other planet before you can jump over there, and then even then they hit you with another one like you can't climb up this specific kind of wall for most of the level. So you know what I mean? Like it's that whole idea of you need to find a device or the power or the skill that allows you to traverse this particular kind of area, uh, and you won't get anywhere in that area. So go to another area and then come back to it later. Yeah, it has that structure as like in terms of like the design of the game and. Like and how you progress, I would agree it is very kind of Metroidvania. But yeah. I think from like a, like looking at the game specifically and how it plays, it is very like Souls like. And I think that's the thing is that it's a mixture of things, and that's kind of it lacks its own identity in a lot of ways as a game. Like in terms of the gameplay experience, in terms of the story experience, it's got plenty of identity and yeah. like it stands for, it stands fine. But for as a game, it is very lacking as an experience because we play it and you're not going to be wowed by it. It's a very standard experience. This set pieces that are cool like the boss battle is in that game in my opinion every Sith battle is fantastic I love all of them even if they are basically the same thing over and over again yeah. they feel fun like you yeah. feel triumphant when you're going against them and then in the case of the final boss fight Darth Vader you feel fucking you feel like shit you feel like yo you know, I gotta run I yeah. can't triumph against this I'm fucked <laughs> um, and I do like and this where this game really starts to pick up and come into its own is actually where you combine game mechanics and story together and this most of the game mechanics that are kind of shit, in my opinion, um, actually bleed into the story and make sense. Just given, like, because our main character is Cal Kestis, um, a scrap collecting leprechaun mm-hmm. from a certain planet who avoided the Jedi Purge and is now a fully grown man yeah. um, who has quite a bit of emotional range, I suppose. I suppose, okay. I like Cameron Monaghan, though. He's a good actor. So they, they do, I think they got the voice right. I, I do like it. It's not complex. It's an M-rated game, so it's not super... Like M-rated, sorry, PG-13 plus for the Americans. It's pretty standard, right? Like, it's not incredibly violent. It's not super gory or full-on or graphic or any of that kind of stuff at all. So... I don't think a game needs to be, like, violent or anything. I don't think it does yeah. like It's, it's good, yeah. yeah. And this is parts of that game that freaked me right the hell out. Um, one of those was the the Kashyyyk level where you're going up under the tree and there's all those like flower things that just come up and try and bite you and like the the yeah, that looks very and stuff. creepy <laughs> yeah it was just weird you just get in there you're like Ugh. yeah I, I do not enjoy that but then I remember that I played Crash Bandicoot as a kid and you were like jumping off you know many plants all the time as platforming and I was like oh this is just Crash Bandicoot this is fine <laughs> exactly mm. desensitized to it <laughs> It's nothing no, it's about the environment. It's also by the fact that this game looks so incredible. Well, exactly, yeah. yeah. The visuals for the game are very fantastic. Well, There's some that. great visual set pieces, like the start, like the first level of the game. It's, ju- it's basically just a 
scripted event the whole way through but it's fantastic like yeah. the visuals happening are fun the train like and like fighting the fucking clones on the, the train designs of all of the levels themselves are fantastic Kashyyyk is awesome I do enjoy like, I think Kashyyyk's one of my favourite levels I really liked Ilum as well the Jedi Crystal Planet was incredible the snow and everything else that was just cool yeah uh, and that was mostly devoid of stuff I do like Death Mirror's design even if I don't really like that level on its oh, own I've never run into any more glitches than I did on that level we well yeah but like, I mean like if I'm looking at the aesthetic of the world I'd say I like the design of that world the most because it feels the most unique in terms of like the game because obviously it's like Kish- like Kashyyyk and it's, it's just your generic like forest level you got the snow planet or something it's like games have these kind of levels da- Daphimir at least when I was looking I was like this looks new and interesting for like oh, Savannah it's just Savannah, Savannah yeah. level. not saying that the other planets are bad yeah. like it's just a, they're very kind of like in the like, games you get your snow or like games like that you get your snow and like forest snow levels or whatever. Mountainous. yeah and then Zepho is just mountains yeah so you've got you've got everything covered yeah and then Daphne is just a breath of fresh air really yeah, it's, air, like, it's still it. kind of like a desert planet though like, when it is but like the red aesthetic makes it a bit more fun oh, and kind absolutely. of like dying life so, like yeah. yeah it's fun that's even if I fucking hate the level of, like just in terms of how much it amps the difficulty out of nowhere also just I never and, and yeah there's so many fucking bugs on oh, that oh dude I told you about how, like, I would run, you can run through, like, there's a group of enemies that you can just run past before they spawn, but then yeah. if, because you're running too fast, the enemies spawn, but then they're T-posing as they chase after you. Uh, is that, was that before the, um, Taran, what's his name? Tar- Taran, m- miss, what, what? Evil Jedi dude. What's oh, his Evil Jedi dude. I have no idea what his name is. Yeah, I can't well, remember. Well, he has, no, I was just playing this video game. I should remember. I was just stuck on this overnight. What's the name of the guy? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, way. we won't get yeah, stuck on that but um memory like a goldfish I remember you saying that yeah you ran into a bug with him like when you were talking to him in a cutscene yeah yeah he, uh, he had no hands and then I, I, I was disturbed by the fact that he had no hands and then it's put back on a cow and cinematic I'm like cool cool so when I go back it'll be fine and it wasn't fine because when it went back the same hooded cloaked wanderer stranger is sitting there T-posing in midair in front of me and I can I can't actually see the guy's face. All I'm looking at is like his hooded crotch in front of him, and then just the half of character model T posing in front of him. And then the cinematic ended. I thought finally we can go back to normality. So I spun around, spun back around again, and there was just two of them chilling, clipping through each other. One of them wasn't moving. One of them was moving and talking. It was it was yeah, it was fantastic. Uh, fantastic. Well optimized game. Yeah, <laughs> incredibly good uh, on the on the base PS4. Exactly. Sure better on the PC or the PS4 Pro. It's a perfect game. No yeah. problems at all. And. Yeah. Oh, really? But speak, being serious, I think that's like only an example of few. Like, there's so many glitches in that game, and it's not limited to Death Mirror as well. There are a couple of bugs here and there. I swear the fucking ledge grabbing in that game doesn't work sometimes. Nah. Like, the platforming it just nah. doesn't work. The sliding is garbage. Uh, I have glitched on sliding before as well. Like, you you, you input. So, there, there's a steering. It's like trying to steer a bus with your dick when you're sliding down these, these slopes. It just doesn't work out. And you can change and you can crank it, and then for whatever reason, you input jump at the last second or even before the last second and the game just straight up doesn't reach your input. Yes. And then it just throws you straight into the pit and then you start the entire process again. I think and I if you've got to jump from like five different slides, that is a nightmare. I remember one time like I couldn't, I tried to force pull something and it didn't, it didn't just come, like it just didn't pull it over and yeah. I fell to my death and I was like, cool, that's yeah, fine. That's I'm fine. glad. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's just the, old, I think the ultimate problem can be summoned, like summed up in the game lacks polish. Like it needed an extra round of polish, in my opinion, and it would have been it would have been enjoy it would have been pretty. I don't want to say it would have been great because there's still like things fundamentally that it, yeah. like the game is lacking. But it would have been fluid at least. It would have been an experience that doesn't feel glitchy. But what you get is this fucking glitchy it's mess at times. <laughs> at times, and I think those times, if, if we're being honest, aren't that common. They're not like no, they're not like it's not common like, that the yeah. game's exploding in your face no. and like you got two clones of like NPCs talking to you while yeah, one's yeah, T posing, no. uh, but they are there. That <laughs> does happen. And the fact that I played through once and you've played through, you platinum this game. Yes, um, right. <laughs> you platinum the game and you've done it on the second hardest difficulty. No, you don't have to do it on the second hardest difficulty. Right. Yeah, there's no difficulty associated trophies with platinum at all. Yeah. Oh damn. So you could have done the entire thing on easy. Would have been fine. Yeah, you could have. Yeah. For reference, I played it on normal the entire way up to I got to like Dathomir's boss, and then after that, I just went. I want to do the podcast, so I'm finishing this today, and basically just yeah, I turned it to easy, and it's called story mode, and it feels like story mode because. Yeah. So everyone in the comments tell Pete what a little bitch he is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. Something else that I think stands great, like on that's similar to the visuals, is, is I think the music is pretty fucking fantastic. I in think that it's game. very much in keeping with the old style. It's a, that, yeah. and that's it why it feels like that yeah. John Williams sort of style, 
orchestra. Yeah. yeah, it's fantastic, man. I think the music's fantastic. I think like I think just in general, Star Wars always has great music. I don't think yeah. I don't, I can't really think of a single movie or piece of Star Wars media that doesn't have bad music. Even the worst movies have good music. Like Rise of Skywalker sucks, but the music's pretty good. It's yeah. serviceable. Like, Star Wars Unleashed just recycles all the music from the old, yeah, exactly. old stuff. Anyways, it's fine. Yeah, Force Unleashed is an interesting game. <laughs> I, I I enjoy it. I I enjoy. I, I haven't played it in years. Yeah. But I enjoy it as well. But I think um, ugh, voice crack there. Um, yeah, that's fine. I think um, I think what's great is that they're both very different games, and I'm super happy that Fallen Order is not on the scale that Force Unleashed is because while I enjoyed Force Unleashed, I enjoyed a more laid back kind of personal story of Cal and how he isn't this special godsend of a Jedi, and he is just an ordinary Padawan. He doesn't have unlimited potential or anything, unlike um. Star Killer, and I think that makes it enjoyable, and that's what makes the story for the game fresh. Is that it's not an experience like Force Unleashed. Force Unleashed has things that Excel was in. Mm. I re- I enjoyed the first game a lot. I have distant memories of the second game. I it, that yeah, I've played the first one. I have it on PC. Yeah, uh, it's 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 uh, it's fun. I think actually, but going back because we were talking earlier about the whole it's it's like a Souls game. Right? Yes. So that was a question. I have a couple number of graphs about this game, and some of those come down to the fact that I think I'll put it two ways broadly. One. The gameplay has all the stuff that you need. It's the... And I'm not sure if you've heard about this before, but it's like the safe AAA title sections yeah. of an action-adventure game. Okay, I don't know if you've ever yeah. played uh, the remake they did of Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider which came Tomb out in like 2014, 2015. I never did. I didn't. That game feels like exactly like this in a okay. lot of ways. Uh, the level design is different, but it's just action set pieces. The climbing mechanics are scarily similar in a lot of ways. Uh, the jumping mechanics and landing on stuff is jank. Um, <clears throat> the the whole story. I mean, Tomb Raider is a different kind of game. It's more violent, more for once, more this, more that. It's a uh, very like straightforward. I think feminist narrative. Not that there's anything particularly wrong with it, yeah. obviously, but it's, it's all about female empowerment, and that's like that. That is what it is. It's still fun to play, uh, and it feels like a rip off of Last of Us. But also leaving that alone. Um, but it does everything. It actually has all these things. So, like I said, it, all these. Ga- it, it feels like a not so not as good Uncharted Tomb Raider does, right? So then I go to like this game. It's like it feels like a not as good Tomb Raider. Well, actually, it's better. Does a lot of things better than Tomb Raider, but it still has that same kind of. You need to have a jumping section. You need to have a platforming section. And you need to have a down. combat section. You need to have a mystery finding secret section. Where you can do all the collectibles. You need to have a section where you can get more skins for your character. You need to have a section for story. And you know what I mean? Like, there's a sort of what feels like kind of formula that you use to make these high quality AAA action adventure, quote unquote, not sure I like that term, game. Yeah. And that's what this game does. And that's, it gives you, delivers you the narrative. Well, we're definitely a genius in this game, wise, if there is any genius that all we had. I think there is some. I give Respawn, Respawn a huge amount of credit. I think they're fantastic developers. Uh, even if they do make like Battle Royale, which I <laughs> test with my very soul. But um, the genius is that the gameplay itself is justified in the story that they're trying to tell. Yeah, it is. It's Well, because, like, it's very... Like, obviously, the gameplay is basic. Like, Cal doesn't have very, com- like, complex moves or anything. Like, they're all very kind of generic Jedi moves. you got the smash down, like, with your lightsaber. you got the lightsaber throw or anything. But it ties into the Cal... Like, what I said before, the Cal isn't really anything special. He hasn't got, like, force lightning or anything. He's got, like, ability to slow down time, which seems to be kind of more of a glitch with him than anything else. Like, not a glitch in terms of game sense. I yeah. mean, glitch in terms of his force seems a bit wonky. His force abilities seem a bit wonky. Yeah. And I think it works because, narratively-wise, Cal is ordinary. And so, when you play the game, you feel kind of ordinary. You don't yeah. feel any th- like overpowered or anything. And I think what like what you said is true, is that what this story justifies to kind of... I don't want to say bland gameplay, but just the gameplay. average gameplay, yeah. yeah. I think I, if, if there is, like I said, getting into this, I think that's where it's clever. That It is clever in that it's... I don't want to say it's so average, because it, there are parts of the game which are really great. I really enjoy it. I think the combat's fantastic past a certain point. But honestly, what, what's weird is when I'm playing on easy, it actually feels like I'm a real Jedi. <laughs> I do mean that. Yeah. Like, the platforming stays the same, which is a pain in the neck. Um, Fighting the bosses, okay, like, I would prefer to crack it up to, like, Jedi Knight, Jedi Master difficulty, just to get, like, how hard it would actually be to fight a full sensitive user with a lightsaber. But, like, against regular mooks, like, just against regular stormtroopers, they go down in, like, two hits, and that makes perfect sense to me. That's like, yeah, okay, that's cool. Whereas if you're playing on a higher level, higher difficulty, and even just your basic stormtroopers or stumbletons can be a massive pain, there's, like, five of them. Those enemies are fucking the worst. (laughs) 
Also, if, if you are, just a quick tip, if you are either, th- either thinking of getting into speed running for this game and or just trying to blitz through it with the maximum amount of, like, like the least amount of bullshit humanly possible, uh, kite all the enemies to a cliff edge, jump behind them, and then just force push all of them off a cliff. Yes. That is the fastest and easiest I way of dealing with it. But it, because I was planning it as well, I yeah. was running around doing everything. So by the end of the game, whenever I saw one of those fucking, like, super soldiers, I was basically just like, I'm put, yeah, I was basically just like, I'm pushing you off the edge. Yeah, I'm, okay. not, yeah. I'm not fucking fighting you. I'm not engaging in a battle <laughs> for, like, 20 minutes. Yeah. And, yeah. But um, I think it's because Cal also, like, when he does, he's got, so you've got the, um, I think it's, like, quite God of War, actually. Uh, the new God of War, God of War, where you've like, you tap circle, you've got that sort of hop, like that sort of sidestep, and then you yeah. double, and you've got those things. It's interesting, like you've got the full roll, which is the dodge roll. With the sidestep, it's brief. It's just like a sort of weird stumble in one direction. He has to sort of catch his balance at the end of it, which I think is cool, because it's like, he's not super adroit. He's not super, super like great with his footwork. But it works in the context of the story, because it's quite quick. And then I can be a sort of dodge roll, and you see him come up. He looks, you know, he sort of stops and holds himself. But the character modeling is quite good. The combat looks fantastic. They got all the really fun flourishing from yeah, the Sith going on. I think, I think I really the like. visuals in terms of like the actual movement looks good. Yeah, absolutely. I think the mocap's fantastic. I think that um, the combat's you know serviceable. Definitely. There are some times where I think like characters glitched into wars as I was doing a finisher, and I was like, that's fun. Yeah. yeah. You know, but it's not very. It's not often. It's not like whenever I do it, there's gonna fucking the character's gonna fall through the ground. But it does happen every now and then. I really do like also that Cal has like some mild martial arts moves. Uh, yeah, this, I remember this you is saying interesting. that. Yeah, because. You don't get that in Force Unleashed at all. Like, you just got the lightsaber and then you're just destroying everything with the Force. In this game, it's like, the Jedi are a cast of warrior monks from thousands of years ago. So they're using, like, arm locks and they're using, like, you know, sort of hip throws and trips and slips and stuff like that. It actually feels like they're kind of, you know, martial artists. They're kind of like warrior monks. It makes sense. I really like the way it sort of fits into the combat and the way they utilize that with lightsabers. Yeah. I really like, as a visual, it's quite fantastic. Or you just dodge and just throw a kick at someone's head. That's like, that's cool. I like that. Yes, I like that aspect a lot, and that really shines when you're playing against second sister, right? Because she's got like some gnarly stuff she does, like she's just doing the spins and jumping up and like yeah, doing these like crazy spin flips and trying to cut you down with the lightsaber, like. And also, Cal's super acrobatic. Yes, yeah, in the gameplay, is. which again, like all the platforming makes sense when you think this guy was where like, I spent most of his life on a scrap planet, and he was a pad of one, and he was super agile back then, and now he's just had like all the opportunity in the world to hone this and get really good at climbing on stuff and edging through stuff and slipping through tight cracks. Exactly. Ben must be ripped as shit. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> the kind of body weight exercises he does. So I, I, I like that aspect of it. Like the whole climbing thing, it's like most of the time you look at someone like Lara Croft just, you know, fresh off a cruise ship or whatever, just some archaeologist's daughter has nothing and then starts climbing up walls like a champ. It's like, well, in this case, it's, yeah, it makes sense because he does that for a living. <laughs> Show off the bat. And then the combat, it's weird, it's awkward, it's clunky. He's not just slicing through people's guards. He's got to, like, dodge. He's got to sort of play it safe because he's a Padawan. He's not a Master Swordsman because he's had a whole bunch of training, but that was, like, years ago when he was a kid. So now it's he's just, so it's all getting rusty, and just by doing it, he gets better and better. Yes, yeah. And then you've got the double lightsaber, and then you've got the split lightsaber. Like, that's really cool. Yeah, just play yeah. lightsaber. <laughs> I enjoy that. I enjoy yeah. that as well. So well, I um, think that, the, yeah, just, just to recap that, though, the genius, I think the cleverest part of the game is that the, we can say we can probably both agree the gameplay is kind of average and it's very but average. it works because it's an average character like I said that works within the story within the realms of the story they're trying to tell it doesn't feel out of place or weird but it doesn't really yes yeah. and speaking of that story we'll move into the story which for me is a highlight I fucking adore the story for Fallen Order <laughs> a lot I think it's like we, we, I've said it at the start with Star Wars movies and like other games and TV shows I kind of always just watch them like they're fun I enjoy them they're good like things to actually take like turn my brain off but I'm not invested into them or anything like, I, I'm i not invested into the characters for Star Wars like Luke Darth Vader I find them fun and cool characters for the time but I don't find them to actually be compelling characters for me for Fallen Order however I found almost every character in that game to be very compelling and I was very invested into what was happening to all of them Cal I adore as the main character and I think he is fantastic and probably the best Star Wars protagonist for me outside like, I haven't read comics or anything maybe there's some great characters there but I'll be like the law for Star Wars is so deep that please forgive me if I haven't heard of some random Dude, Jedi. No, no one knows everything. Yeah, okay. About Star Wars. I just don't want some Star Wars fan to be like, well, actually, this Jedi did the same thing Cal did or yeah. something. It's like, okay, cool. I'm talking about what I've experienced, but um, I think Cal's fantastic, and I think the second sister is also a fantastic villain as well. Trilla. I think, she, yeah, Trilla. Yeah. I think she's very compelling, and I learning a backstory. It's like, okay, I can understand why you turned to the dark side and why you're a bit pissed off at everything right now. It makes yeah. sense. And similar, I think Cray, um, Cree or however you say her name, see her, yeah. yeah. I think her character is compelling as well. Even though I think you have issues with her, I think she's compelling because I like the idea of a Jedi that actually turned to the dark side and is 
com- like stuck with that conflict. Well, she used it once. Well, but it's still like she's at the end of the game. She's yeah. still using it, yeah, and right. it's still, like she's a Jedi who is battling the dark side constantly. And I find that really compelling as a character because I don't think I've I haven't I haven't seen a. Uh, um, a Star Wars movie do that. I don't know if they do it ever again in the comics. I'm sure there is one comic of a Jedi to turn dark or rogue or something. Yeah, well, there's a dark Jedi. There's, there's yeah. the entire classification yeah. and lore. It's, it's I, I, I guess Anakin conflict. as well is that as well, but yeah. let's not... I, we won't talk about that. Like, I, I, not, like, it hasn't been done to the level that I think we see in Siri, where it's also the fact that she's dealing with the consequences of her turning to the dark side and, like, that she has to deal with Trilla is a Sith, partly because of her, mm. but also, like, not entirely her fault. I don't think it was in the end. Like, she kind of did... I can't remember what happened, actually. She, did, she didn't rat her out or anything, right? They just she found did. Trilla. No, she did. Oh, she did? Yeah. Okay, I couldn't remember exactly. Well, no, they brought Trilla in front of her. Yes. And then she lost her shit, but before that, she did She did sell them out. Okay, she I couldn't remember if she, she actually did, sold them out. Yeah, 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 yeah all right. Well, then, yeah, still, that goes into what I was saying. That she, the fact that she has to deal with the consequences of her actions is very interesting to me, and I like her character though I do think um I think um how she gets knocked down out of the battlefield at the end of the game is a bit goofy and I kind of am like you could have done it a bit <laughs> she better. lunges at Darth Vader and he sort of flicks his head and just goes sailing off yeah. the edge and then Cal's like well she's dead yeah I think that's a bit <laughs> that's I great. think that's a bit goofy but um I think otherwise I, I don't know I think all the characters are great the the pilot for the ship is your average pilot I don't I don't think he's annoying or anything he's kind of charming at times he has some one liners and I'm like that's cute and all that but yeah, I think the I think the story and characters are great. What do you you have some grievances? Well, I, I, some grievances? Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna reference exactly what you said at the start um, of the story discussion, which is basically just it's a Star Wars game, it's a Star Wars thing. So when you go into Star Wars, you sort of just switch your brain off. Yeah, that's exactly what I did for the entire story for the most part. I I, I didn't go into this like I went in with an eye for the story, obviously trying to pay attention, but I wasn't going and talking to every single NPC when I had the opportunity to. I was just going to like, no, I don't really care. I'm just going to run right into the middle of this, um, get everything done, get into it, get out of it. Like, I'm just trying to finish this game. So I can talk about it, right? But you're subjected to the cutscenes regardless of whether or not you want to skip them, which I found out annoyingly when I had to reload some of the saves and do the next nice again. Uh, on repeat playthroughs, do you have to see all the cutscenes again or can you skip them? I hadn't, like I said, you don't have to do more than one playthrough for to platinum it. So I right. only did one playthrough. Cool. You can't sit in the um, which is a really annoying thing. Yeah. That said, uh, credits respawn where credit is due. If you die uh, after having seen a cinematic that, or having heard certain voice lines when you're going towards you an objective, to. they don't replay that. They don't replay that. That is a godsend because I hate having to do that. Every single time you die, you're running through and your character repeats the same shit on a loop. This yeah. game that it's like, no. Until there is new dialogue or something new going on, you will hear nothing. Yeah, not it. I, I remember good. I, I do quite like that. That's yeah, uh, dying, really I'm good. playing on hard. I died a lot in boss battles, so it was yeah. refreshing to like just go into the battlefield. Yeah. <laughs> I died a lot of normal. Yeah, uh, not only easy because you know, easy. It's 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 like easy is brainless, man. If you're looking just for a brainless playthrough of a game, you play on easy. It's yeah, so experiencing the story basically. Yeah, basically. I think um yeah I think the thing that is most interesting about this game for me is that it is a game the whole theme of it is basically about kind of combating the dark side for these characters like Cal has the moment of kind of temptation in like or when he's like going through to flash forwards like and he's seeing like the possible future of like the order and that and like all these younglings dying and him being turned into the dark side and how the game is constantly about how he is basically a complex human like he and he isn't like Luke or anything or he's or well, he's in like Luke where he's kind of more... Oh, well, Luke... Actually, I don't want to badmouth Luke because Luke does kind of go through some complexities. But he's not like Ray, for example, where they try to kind of sugarcoat some moral complexity, but there's really nothing. She's always like good despite the fact that... Yeah, I mean, Ray's a mess. I'm not going to talk about that. But like he is a complex character and when he is going through these things, you do feel sympathetic for him. When he's like at the fall... And when he's at the Jedi Temple and he like gets the crystal and then it breaks, you feel like sympathetic for him because like, wow, okay. And he... When he's fallen down and he's just given up for a moment, it feels real. It doesn't feel like... You don't need to have your character be like, no, it's not over yet. Let's keep going. He gets a pep talk by BD1 and I think that's refreshing. On BD1 as well, I am stunned that a Star Wars story made me like care about a droid in the movie, in like again in one of its stories. Like in all the movies and other things, whenever I see a droid, I'm just like, I don't give a fuck about this dumb fan service and market marketing fucking piece of shit. I don't want any. I don't want any of this. Like there's the less tr- about the sequel trilogy. Oh, like the sequel trilogies, and I feel like even the original trilogies are, are kind of the same. I don't really care that much about R two or C three period. They just seem like kind of like things to like keep the kids distracted and laugh at. But with um. This game, it feels like BD1, well, he's kind of that as well. He's kind of the cute mascot for the game. 
there is a bit of character to him as well. And there is a bit of journey, like a journey that BD1 is going through with Cal. And because they're both going through it together, the dynamic between them feels like refreshing and it feels fun and enjoyable. And there's like, it feels like there is an actual connection between the two and you see it full get formed. And I enjoy it because of that. There's a really good, uh, just sort of gameplay as well. What I'm talking about integrating gameplay and story. There are sections where you cut off from BD1. Yes. Right. And, when you're doing those sections, you actually genuinely feel alone. Mm. You're like, holy shit, because BD1 has a lot of applications in gameplay, mostly just opening doors, overcharging things, moving some stuff around for puzzles, uh, you can hack droids, especially security droids. I found it really funny just to have like five nights with security droids. So like, you know when they're um, in yeah. the- Sith Yeah, I know what you're talking about, yeah. Sith Dojo, they throw like three of them at you, you just like bash them all down, you just hack them and then they just run around and do all the work for you, just start like just pummeling. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty funny. Troopers. And I'm just sitting back there just like twirling my lightsaber and just watching like, this is hilarious, yeah. I love this. Uh, <laughs> that's fun, yeah, that's because of BD1. You know, he opens up all the doors, he's the adorable little, like he's, even the squeaks and the beeps and this and that, like, He's very dog-like, little two-legged bipedal dog sort of thing. And the antennas do the ear yeah. thing. Like it, it's he's adorable, but also he has such gameplay utility. Like he he is so constantly there all the time when you're doing gameplay stuff, like sliding down repel lines and whatever else. That when you don't have him, you feel lost. Yeah, this is Cal is acting when he's in that sort of section. Like he he's like oh, I haven't got my little buddy here to help me. I've got to find him straight away. That's my first priority. Um, so yeah, I just, just a little side note. Yeah. That actually does support your whole point of yeah, the relationship between these two feels believable. Yes. and it's enforced by gameplay. Just that um, just that segment in the Jedi Temple where um BD One plays that final cut over log. Yeah. that feels more emotionally filled filled to me than many like most scenes in the Star Wars like universe. Like for me, like watching that scene, I'm actually kind of like I feel like connected like I'm actually connecting to these characters and these like this dynamic between them and I feel like they're understanding things and just a pep talk and then Cal getting back up and making a lightsaber feels perfectly in theme with what Star Wars is meant to be about which the newer films seem to be lacking in terms of how they develop their characters but we won't talk about the new films or anything we seem to be doing a lot of not talking about them sure yeah well I I, I can't resist <laughs> I'm still I'm still annoyed but um I and yeah I just enjoy how this game is a Star Wars story, but at the same time, it is trying to be more and have its characters be very unique and interesting and you care about them. Like, I remember you saying that you did like Moran's character as well, which makes me happy because I really love Moran's character. I'm sorry, I am thinking I'm saying her name. The Night Sister. Marin. Marin, yeah. Marin, Marin, yeah. Marin, yeah. Sorry, I'm very close to yeah. 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 Yeah, no, Marin. Um, Marin is, yeah, Marin is amazing. Yes. I, I love Marin so much. I mean, well, first of all, I just thought, like, oh, this is the usual necromancer bitch, don't care, don't care, don't care. Yeah. Aggressively don't care, don't give a shit, stop throwing undead screaming skeletons at me. Yes. Don't care. <laughs> Get that shit out of my face. I'm here to do a job. I want to finish this game so I can talk about it. And then they smack you with the feels when you're fighting off... The guy that you can't remember his name. Mark. We're going to be Mark here all day. Davos, to remember. Mark, something like that. Yeah. I'm going to Google that. Actually, I'm going to Google that shit. But she helps you out in this boss battle, which is actually quite tough because it's the first fight that you have against a Jedi that yeah. you don't... A Jedi, like a dark and it's Jedi a great moment. Will, yeah. It's a great moment as well because it's when you're coming back from the Jedi Temple with your lightsaber. So you're, it's meant to be a triumphant feeling moment. Is, you're meant actually, to feel like you're becoming moment, better. talking about triumph, though, I think, it's, again, another inspired moment in this video game is when you get the split lightsaber ability and the first thing they do when you get out of the temple is just throw legions of people at you. Yeah. They just throw crap tons of people. They're just like, by the way, this stuff is overpowered as shit. Use it. And then you do, and you just start like murdering people. Even on easy, like even on normal mode, even on Jedi Knight uh, difficulty. I found that so gratifying. It was like, oh, so yeah. I, I've been I've been on the back foot with these people all game, and suddenly now I have this tool where I can just go through them like a hot knife. It was, oh man, that was really gratifying. I think that was a really good gameplay decision. Like just his entire hordes have fun with it, and I did have fun. I had a lot of fun with that, and I really enjoyed that part. So I think that's great. I think um, it's, yeah. I think what's great for all the characters is that they all do have a connection to Cal like in some way they do have something like similar to their like that brings them together so obviously Cal and BD1 they're both looking for Cordova logs like so they can like Cal can complete his journey but so also so BD1 can remember what like can get back his memory Cal and um, Kree or whatever which I keep saying her name wrong but Sia uh, Sia yeah Sia, <laughs> Sia yeah, yeah whatever we, we won't do we won't do this just yet but um they, those two are trying to like become bring the order back and they want to find hope, I guess, or like create some kind of new hope. Cal and Marin, for example, they both lost all the like their like their army, like their people basically, and that brings them together. And I think that's what makes Greece. 
Oh, Grease is just a fucking... He's the driver. And, uh, you, and he, he's just like the uncle. <laughs> he's the uncle that doesn't like... They kind of is around, but you start to like him a bit at the end because he's a bit, he got, he gets a bit of a soft spot and you're like, and yeah. But like with all the main characters, I mean, like the characters that are important. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But um, with those characters, there is a reason that brings them together. And because you understand that reason and it doesn't feel forced, it's fun and you enjoy the dynamics and the interaction with each other. Even, even Triller, you can understand why he's sympathetic towards her, like her fair bit and is trying to help her. And that's what makes it enjoyable. That could have been him. Yeah. That could have been him. And, so it's and that's what's great. We haven't even talked about the um the bit where the game actually shows the Order sixty six thing from his side of view, which a lot of people love, and I enjoy a lot. Like, oh, I think that's the best part of the game. Okay, uh, one of the best parts, absolutely. Um, in terms of like raw storytelling, fantastic. Okay, because you got flashbacks the entire way through, and you're like, what is it? it, it you, you don't. Con- I don't know. I didn't consciously think. Oh, I wonder how that actually played out. Yes, I don't. I don't think of that. So like, he's got these occasional flashbacks to demonstrate these particular mechanics of him healing his connection to the Force, which I do like. Is also as a thing. Um, also, by the way, I have a, a massive, massive sucker for any kind of third-person action adventure game that has double jumping. Okay. So <laughs> I, I played a lot of. I played Crash Bandicoot at a very formative age. It was the first video game I ever played. Now, <laughs> that somersault, for whatever reason, was just the shit. Ratchet and Clank had somersaulting. Okay. Yeah. Like every single good third-person action adventure, like, you know, sort of platformer, has double jumping. It has double jumping. This game has double jumping. What pisses me off is you don't get that shit. That's like the last force power thing you get. In the entire game. Yep. Missed opportunity, in my opinion. I, I, I hate that shit so much. I wanted to be able to do flips, damn it. Starkiller can do that shit straight from the get-go. Anyway. Anyway, before anyway. you went off on your double jump rant, you were I, talking about Order 66. Yes. Um, no, we're talking about the... Yeah, the mechanical sections make sense. I really like that part of it. Um, and I, that was cool. I was like, oh, this, is, this is all right, but I don't really care. I, I didn't care much about it, to be honest, uh, initially. But then you go into that part where it's like confronted with the entire past and the history of it. It's, it's, it's emotionally traumatizing. Straight up. Okay. Um, you know what I mean? Like, it's really uh, cool. Yeah, I, yeah. I enjoy it. I just like, I, it's not my favorite part of the story. No, no, no. I know a lot of people love it. And I'm, yeah. I'm just like, it's cool. It's fun. I enjoy yeah. it. I think I'm just tired of the Order 66 and kind of anything that connects like game things, Star Wars media to the main storyline. And I kind of enjoy it a lot more when things are this like distinct from it. Though I still enjoy the Order 66 moment, but I think whenever I see something that connects it to the Star Wars canon, I'm always kind of like, uh, we're yeah, here again. Well, well, I'm trying to think of the most meaningful parts of that game, which actually connected to the rest of the story, like that wider universe. I mean, that's basically the main ever thing. Mentioned- He's, he's shown you see a glimpse of him like you see a flashback of him like not a flashback you see like a hologram of him I'm pretty sure right like they kind of mention him and then you don't yep. see him again yep that's once uh, anyone else at all no mentions him so. Darth Vader. Apparently, obviously Darth Vader's in this game well, sorry yes, but we should probably mention that but. there's apparently um, an easter egg where if you press a button 66 times they say order 66 uh, okay. I, I don't know how real that is but I saw it and I said that's a fun easter egg that I'm never going to try and replicate no <laughs> I don't want to press a button 66 times yeah exactly okay. but um, yeah obviously yeah Darth Vader is in the game yeah so he's he's the sort of big the big bad like, yeah he's he's, but he's fucking terrifying he's, in that game he's fantastic he's absolutely fantastic he's my, my favourite part of the entire game I, I, I'm not saying the, the Order 66 moment but that's one of my favourites sorry I should I should, I should yes, just like no, I extrapolate I think my favourite part of that game is the fight the, the not fight against Vader that's no, incredible it's fantastic it's a brilliant set piece yeah. like it's it, it is less like an actual gameplay segment and more just kind of like run like it's not really gameplay it's just like run away like move here don't try and all the crap's flying around yeah. like bending everything with a force but you don't stuff. you don't know you don't mind because obviously it, it run away it's yeah. Darth Vader you, what are you gonna do like the whole yeah. you know like you but throughout the whole game you know that Cal's not someone special like he's yeah. a great character but he's not this ultimate force sensitive guy that's gonna save the world or something he's this a, is a problem with average, Star, this is a problem with force unleashed it feels a lot more like a overpowered fan fiction self yeah. insert than it does an actual game and it works like, for it force unleashed there's an actual Star Wars story sorry yeah. it works for force unleashed in my opinion like it's fun like that way and I think they just wanted you to have a fun kind of gameplay experience and also showcase it graphics engine exactly and, and it works for force unleashed but it wouldn't work here like in Fallen Order because if you had that and you got to this point you wouldn't be too worried you'd be like oh Star Vader that's cool but I, I'm, I'm strong I'll kick his ass yeah, but because right. you played the, this because you played Fallen Order and you're struggling against every single Sith one yeah. you run into when, and you probably just like spent like if you played on hard or normal I don't, because I, I don't know how like long took and easy but if you played normal hard you probably spent like an hour fighting the, seven, the second sister yeah. and then Darth Vader shows up and you're like well if he just like stabs her in the back and yeah. fucking terrifies her and you're like alright cool I'm dead yeah, I I, 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 I always 
so sticks out. I always enjoy Cal's quirk, like kind of like sh- like smart ass lines that he still sends in like the final like in the confrontation where he's like where Duffy's like it would be wise to retreat, and then yeah, Cal's like, like perhaps like, yeah, yeah, like maybe. Yeah, but he's, he's shitting himself. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I probably. still just enjoy that he's yeah. like being a bit of a smart ass like yeah. like he is and it's, it's enjoyable I, I love Cow's but character but he's not super quippy I he's know. not he's yeah. not quippy to the point of annoying he's not sarcastic he's not this he's not that I don't find him particularly witty he's not he I just has a bit of, he just has a bit of stupid like lines he just like yeah. says every now and then which like it's just him being a smart ass basically yeah. yeah but yeah Darth Vader like the Darth Vader chase is just run away and you, that whole sequence I was sitting like on the edge of my seat and was like is Cal gonna die because I wouldn't there wouldn't be the first time they killed up a character in a side game because yeah. they don't want him to be in the canon and and yeah, he managed to get away and um And actually beat Darth Vader with the two things that make the most sense to me. Like electricity. Yeah, electricity. Yeah. On the and then water. Yeah. He can't live against It's barely even beating things. him. It's, more, it's barely even beating down. him. It's yeah. more like they get away. Like they yeah. manage to secure an escape route and get away from him. And it makes sense how they do it. Like yeah. something like where it's where he's like, Oh, I can't do much about it. They yeah. can run away on it. And he doesn't fucking care about them in the end anyway. It's like, whatever. It would have been a bonus if I got all these data logs, but I'll, I'll get them later. Yeah. yeah. And then in the end, obviously, Cal destroys, like, the data logs anyway, which is predictable for me. The like, holocron. Yeah, the yeah. holocron, because it's like, obviously, he's not going to make the order, because if he... Well, the then order was... flashback sequence of him being a Sith Lord. Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, yeah. Yeah. I also really like that Merrin is the one to bring that to his attention. Yeah, yeah. I exactly. really like the fact that... So, Merrin, Merrin is this sort of psychopathic necromancer witch that Criminally you Criminally underused in the story. Oh, I, cr- criminally, man. Criminally. She's... And here's the thing, again, like, you go to the world and you're finding your way through the entire like of Dathomir and it sucks and it's not fun particularly a lot of time and then you run into her and then she sticks all these undead zombies on you and you run off planet and basically says run away little boy you're not going to be able to beat us and then he goes through his entire sort of soul searching moment on Ilum gets his new lightsaber casts his way through like most of a legion of stormtroopers comes back to the planet and then basically just goes sub yeah and they have just like nice little cordial conversation and then they fight the boy who is going to betray her or betray them, and then she ends up helping them out. Or she basically just goes, well, you've killed everything else on this planet that's thrown at you, so how about you go try and kill the Jedi guy who's been running most of the, you know, savages who are on this planet? Go for it. And then you do it, and then halfway through the battle, like, as, you, as you're starting to get tired, as you're starting to go, like, oh, this is rough, this is rough, this is getting really rough, she actually kicks in. And then as he's about to crush you, she comes in and saves your life. Yeah, and then afterwards she's like they have just a moment it's really serious like they're sort of bonding over everything else and then she's and he basically Cal just says a mate of mine says I have to go and find my destiny in the stars and she's like well I'm coming with you Yeah, and there's no mention made of that she's like I'm coming with you and he's just like cool and then they just do that it's like it it sucks like because I understand why she isn't used as well from a like narrative point because she comes in very late in the game and like she's there for most of the game to be fair if you go to Daphne first and see her technically she's there just, like pretty yeah, but early she doesn't really kick in until the one well exactly yeah, yeah. It's but, like, like, you have to get double jump first which is halfway through the game anyways yeah so yeah exactly she's like obviously she only becomes a part of the crew really at the end of the game and yeah. it makes sense that she's not going to be there like going to be there for like much of the other game and I feel like they do try and make her have enough like con- like conflict with the group in that last set, like little bit of the game to yeah. like let her be like she is there yeah. which is good it just sucks that she comes in very last minute yeah. but she, she also asks all the serious questions like the real questions this is the point I was trying to get at was basically like suppose you get this holocron and you start finding all these four sensitive children you bring them all together and you're getting hunted all the time anyway how's that going to look for them yeah, exactly. and then you've got the entire story of Sia giving up all the locations of the Padawans and then them turning to be Inquisitors like Dark Side Sith types right yeah. so you've got those two like more aspects and she's one just goes yeah I haven't even thought about this exactly yeah. but even like yeah, beyond that like when you start the game and you hear the journey you know from the start oh this isn't gonna happen because you know like I think by that point anyone who's played the game knows that I think I'm pretty sure Disney do accept the game as canon in the universe so yeah. I'm pretty sure they do. I'm pretty sure it's considered canon. Like, I don't know if they'll ever touch on it in the movies, and I fucking hope they don't. But um, it's basically, I'm pretty sure it's considered canon by, for Star Wars lore. And knowing that, you know that the order isn't going to happen because there's no way that can happen in that universe because yeah. the characters would know about it. And obviously, it's also the fact of what Marion brings up. Darth Vader's not going to let that happen. Yeah, He's going to show up at some point. So you know it's not going to happen. So that's why I don't really. My, it doesn't really bother me too much that at the end he destroys it because, like, yeah, it's obviously not going to happen, and it's probably a better idea to just let them be and what or not. I think that's. Ba- I I know a lot of people have problems with that like thing at the end where he destroys the holocron. Goes like, all this shit, yeah, just to get it, and you have your hands on it, and then you know where everything is, and you're just like, I'm just going to break this. Yeah, I think. Yeah, but I think people just say that 
kind of seem to ignore the fact that the game is there is still growth in that game like the characters are growing the and they learn it's the growth and the shift yeah, yeah I agree it's not like what they wanted to get in the, by the end of the game they realised that there was like that they like you could learn more and they realised that that wasn't what was important and in the end they have this ragtag team of randoms yeah. that are going to work together and most likely get a sequel game or DLC at some point because it's EA yeah. so. dude I, I want a Marin DLC <laughs> Marin DLC I'm just saying I just want to play as Marin that'd be sick that'd be interesting I don't know if she have a lightsaber or what but just give it yeah I just want to play Marin which is great it'd be weird if they gave her a lightsaber but um yeah it would be a bit but yeah, I, I think I think the game works. I remember you said that the like plot twist about Triller and um, series that was like, it's, like it's it's predictable. Mind. It's I super predictable, like, and I think yeah. I I think the game does a good job of not even making it into a big like twist when they do say it. It's very kind of just like Adam, like they just do kind of like bluntly say it. And I'm, I appreciate that because the second like they're talking about Triller and the fact that she's second sister, I'm just like. Oh, she's her Padawan. Yeah. Absolutely. There's Obviously. no there's no denying this. And yeah. when it comes up, I'm glad that they're not making a big deal out of it because it would feel more annoying if they're like, yeah. what, well, you're I a think, Padawan? Yeah, exactly. I, I, I think that's a good example of like, it's a Star Wars story and it kind of has those mm-hmm. Star Wars tropes in it. it like, have that, yeah. yeah, exactly. But I, I think they do good with it, like with the with that like aspect of the story. They don't let it wait, go to waste. There's interesting stuff that they do with it with the, how the characters grow from it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's fun, and I think that's ultimately the thing that I take away the most from the game is that the, it's a it's a very okay game, like we've already established. But for narratively wise, for me, I think it's fantastic, and I love it as a Star Wars story, and it's more what I want Star Wars stories to be. I want them to be these independent stories now that don't connect to Anakin and Skywalkers or something. I'd like them to be about these new like about new characters and new journeys because it's a massive galaxy. That's the whole thing. Is that it's fucking this big galaxy, and it's there's so much potential. You don't have to connect it all to the Skywalkers. And that's kind of why I do like the Mandalorian so far is that it's not connected to Skywalkers or anything so far, at least. And that's what I enjoy. That's what I enjoy more. It if, if Star Wars that's, okay, that's cool. Spoilers. That's good. No, no, but no, no, that shit happens. That, that, that's that kicks in. What I enjoy more about Star Wars, like what I would enjoy more with Star Wars, if now that the story is over or now that the story was over, if they instead just focused on new characters, because I think there's potential for Star Wars if they do that. That's really good. I think, um, and, I'm not too much about the game story, right? So, and I'm not normally the massive cynic about all this stuff, right? Like, I, I can sit here and I can shit on stuff all day. I can try and be a upmarket, technical, you know, like, oh, but the narratively doesn't make sense because of this, 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 and this. I'm not going to be a tosser about it. Star Wars is never, I have never found Star Wars to be particularly in depth or narratively complex, no. right? As a general rule. Yes. This game goes into some good character development, which does constitute depth in my mind. I think it's a really good crossover between gameplay and story, which is also another like really big point in my book. I think that's fantastic. It just the gameplay feels average, but it also fits within the world, so you don't question it too much. Yeah. Although there are parts that will, you know, uh, rage juice <laughs> straight up. Yes. It just will tilt you. Um, but you know, the whole idea of there is this hidden Jedi who then you know must go out and find his destiny, and the fact that Cal's Cal feels super naive to me, which I find yeah. personally irritating. He's just like. For the good of the Jedi Order and everything else, so maybe I've been watching way too much like anti. But yeah, that's the point. Like by the yeah. end of it, he stops being naive. He kind of grows up. Yeah, absolutely right. And there is that aspect of it too, but it's still like this. You know, it's just a stock standard like this. That you know, I think it's, I think it's less naive though, and more him just I, not I having a purpose. Like yeah. he's just kind of being tagged. He's tagging along because he's got nothing else to do, so he's then going there. But then eventually, he finds something to yeah. like do. No, and, I agree yeah. with you. I'm just saying, like, this is why I think the last third of the game last little half third of the game is fantastic because that's where you see all that character growth starting to pop really seriously whereas before that it just like that whole sort of mini sort of plot part where him and Sierra are fighting over shit I just look at that and go get over yourselves like you're both on a ship you both got a job to do just accept it move on yeah. with it I think that's a bit sort of drawn out I think the whole arena section was just out of nowhere and it's, weird it is like that's like high. Breeze is in debt to some people and as a consequence they kidnap you and throw you into an arena which is just filled with all these enemies you've already fought before there's nothing fresh it's just a really weird acid sequence like and then you have to go there and be like rescue BD without using him in a couple of sections and everything else and then you just go through finish like the arena go back and then it's Never spoken of again. Yeah. Except that after that, more bounty hunters start coming after you. So that's just. But again, it's like it's not even explained. It's not even mentioned. If, if you're not listening to the story, you won't even realize why it's going on. So there is that. That, that that's sort of out of nowhere for me. Yeah. Um. I really like Marin. I think Marin's fantastic and criminal underutilized. She. I'm actually interested in her. Maybe because she's edgy and I'm edgy. I'm not sure what that is. Um. I think that Seer is Seer irritates me because she comes off as trying to be a very serious authority figure this that and the other I'm so serious and we've got to rebuild the Jedi Order and everything else so I'm like well 
Yes, but no. Also, your eyes look like a goldfish. I don't understand what it is, but like every single time in a cutscene when her eyes move, like they just bulge out of her head so hard. I'm not sure why. Okay. That, that really bothers me. Every time I look at it, I'm like, I cannot look away from your eyeballs. They're just bulging out of your head too much. That's that's a physical thing. That's not a that's not yeah. a story thing. Um, Grease is... Uh, I don't mind Grease's character. I really like BD1. Actually, like I really do like BD1. I really like Marin. Cal's functional. I like him. He's good. Um, but yeah, and also the whole story, like as we talked about earlier, the twist. This is the twist of the thing. You know, this is that. The Darth Vader twist at the end, that was fantastic. He just comes out of nowhere. You, just hear, yeah. you hear the iconic breathing, and you're like, oh, shit just got real. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. It sucks that every video on YouTube goes out of its way to try and spoil it. Does it? Yeah. Oh, so, I, I, I got I, it spoiled to me in a second the game. I didn't probably. look at anything. That's good. I didn't I'm look at nothing. And when it came up, I was just like, Woo-hoo! One of my friends is playing it, and uh, I, t- I, I told him, he was like, do you have the, the like, anything about the game like, get spoiled to you in terms yeah. of like big stuff? And he was like, no, I don't think so. And I was like, cool, stay off of YouTube while you're playing that game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. So there you go. Pro tip from uh, Sean over here. Don't, do, not, do not go on YouTube if you haven't already seen anything about this and you want to play it. Yeah. I mean, by this point, if they're at this video, they've got it everything spoiled to them. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> We, I, 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 I don't think we ever say it, but we will, I will put spoiler warnings in the description. But really? I feel like it's... I think we always talk about spoilers, though. Like, yeah, we I mean, just like, spoilers. like it's not, like it's pointless. Like, if yeah. you go on this video where we're talking about something for an hour, we're going to talk about yeah, spoilers. We're talk about at some spoilers point. Dude, we're but about some people, people, I think, just feel like they need no, it. Like, just, some I, don't, I don't. know. I feel like if it was like I, I don't know. I just feel like we'll, we need. Put it, to, we'll put it in the actual thing of the YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I'll put it in the description. We don't have to say it. Yeah, we don't have to say it. Spoilers bad in every single episode we do. I'm sorry, but it hurts. The truth hurts. Uh, we'll talk about the whole thing, not just parts. Yeah, of it. I mean, I think if someone goes into like a video about Shrek and gets annoyed that we spoiled it, um, yeah, Shrek well, and, you deserve everything. Yeah, yeah, I think at that point yeah. it's kind of like you should look at the video at length and piece together. We're probably going to spoil something <laughs> at some point. <laughs> I yeah, dude. Like I, when I came out of this game, when I just finished. I had such an adrenaline high because I was super excited. I was thinking about all the stuff I wanted to say about it, and I think I've said most of the things I do want to say. But I just remember like the actual adrenaline of just running away from Darth Vader. I think that's one of the best moments I've ever had in like a story-based video game. And if you'll allow me, I want to draw a couple of comparisons between this and Force Unleashed. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Force Unleashed is retarded. Um, straight up. It, the story is garbage. It's a self-insert fan fiction for the most part. It is okay. It's functional. There's a lot of interest. There's this, there's that. There's whatever else it is. It's a game about blowing shit up with the Force and it's incredible. And I yeah. love that. I love Even if it's made in 2008 or something, it, came, it was still great. Even on the PC with like whatever settings, it's a fantastic game. Yeah. And I really enjoy those aspects of it. However, you can go through and kill, like try and kill the Emperor and Darth Vader, you can shred him. It, it's your way to overpower. Yes. Yeah. But the entire point is it's just really dumb, mindless fun, and you're just running in there and you just get your wish fulfilled. What if I was a Jedi with all of the superpowers and I exactly. everything all at once? That's great. This game is not like that. This game is like, what if you're a Jedi? Just a regular schlub. You're not anyone special. You're a Padawan. You have like little, little thing of training. It's realistic. It's grounded. He doesn't, he can't like push an entire stormtrooper most of the way across the room. And if he does, it's a bit of build up for it. You can't just cannon people across the room. You can't pick them up and like throw them in the other direction. You can like bring them to you at the very end of the game when you're at the height of your power. Like the, this, this story feels very grounded. It feels yeah. very like realistic insofar as Star Wars can feel realistic. It's not. On steroids, it's not on drugs, it's not like on cocaine all the time. You're not running around trying to explode everything. You're just chilling. You're just having a good time. The powers feel measured. Flight saber combat's functional. It's fun. The the, the boss fights, are, yeah. The, I think the best part of the game, really. Like the I keep saying, the fantastic. best part, but like mechanically, I think the boss fights are the best ones. So it's like okay, so you just run through everything. Let's let's see how much you know. Let's see how much you can remember. The boss fights are fantastic. Yeah, they have so much fun to play. I think some of them are uh, kind of shit though. Um, one in particular, so that lizard thing that you fight initially oh, is yeah. massively painful. I don't care much about the bot- like the monster boss fight. Right. Anything, so yeah. Also, the owl was really painful for me as well for whatever reason because the it stomps on the ground and sends like a wave of rocks at you, and that's really jank. The, the yeah. edge on that is really jank because you can double jump over the top of it because you're locked on someone. You do these really little side side flips, but you've got to double jump I think to get over it, and then sometimes that's two in a row just to mess with you. So I got killed by a gigantic carnivorous owl for like an hour and a half last night. It was kind of embarrassing because it was not a, it was not a hard boss. It's fine. Well, it's considered, but like, yeah, it was, it was not fun. Uh, oh, wow. That thing. Yeah. Just all in all, good game. Play it. If you like Star Wars, you should definitely play it. If you're a casual, if, you, if you're not like used to Star Wars, like, you're not used to the Dark Souls sort of setups or anything, it's not, 
It's not like it's quite user friendly. You can get in there and you can play. You don't right? need to have yeah. an experience like Souls like games to play. You can go into it on its own. It's actually like a baby Souls game. Like really, like if you haven't played Souls game, it's probably what will get. You might want to play Souls games after it, if anything. Really, those Souls yeah. games are a lot harder. Yeah, they are a lot harder. A lot more difficult. This game's you can run through people. You can like run around them. You can dodge. You can do this. You can do that. It just takes time, and a lot of enemies sponge a lot of damage, which annoys me. You know, have yeah, block stamina and crap like that. We could get into the mechanics of it. Be your day. Yes, we would yeah, be. Yeah, that's. I think that about sums up. About sums it up. Yeah. So overall, pretty decent game. Decent game. Decent. I think it's aggressively okay. Yeah, I think that's aggressively. I think yeah. There are moments in the story that really shine. I think they're fantastic, and you should play the game just to experience those moments. Yeah, I absolutely like the ending. The last, the last third of the game, like even if it starts off slow, it's a bit of a slog. I think you should like persist to the end because the ending is fantastic, and you get the massive sequel hook at the end, which is also irritating because you get no closure. (laughs) It's like I okay, just, just a bit of closure. It's just kind of it's just this closure. Like the story's wrapped up. It's just kind of like we're gonna make and the adventure continues. Sequel. Yeah, and the adventure just, continues yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah, that's good. But like, what's your final? I'm not saying play it. Yeah, no, yeah. I, yeah it's, if you haven't played it and you don't mind it, we spoiled everything. Go 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 ahead and play it. It's just fun things there. I just I think it's a okay game, but I think it's a fantastic story. Yeah, all right, cool. Absolutely. And that, that's it. Now, yeah, so it's, it's, now it's we're at the end. Yeah, I gotta make you play Force Unleashed, that, bro. Is that the a better reference? <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean, not, that's not the next gonna recommendation. I'm going to go straight into another Star Wars thing. No, I'm not letting you on my computer. That's a bad call. Um, <clears throat> just start writing blog posts for me. <laughs> you're already, I can already write blog posts. You're, 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 you're I've got access to your accounts. Yeah. yeah, no, all right. So we come to the ending segment. Do we have any questions from the audience? Do we? Uh, do, 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 do the audience want to ask questions? Are they asking questions? Do we have any questions? I have no one we comments. Have no questions. We got, I've, ch- I've checked on Twitter. We have no questions. Yeah, we don't got no, no questions. We've got, like, free, we've, got free, we've got free likes. I was what? tempted to sign into my other account and dislike it, actually, just to kind really? of balance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Yeah. Self-sabotage. You put yeah, all this work and you just want to sabotage yourself. What kind of sick game are you playing with me right yeah. now, man? This is rough. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Bulls and Light call it for a recommendation. It is. Isn't it? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I was going to hit you with something I knew you really wouldn't fucking like, but I decided not to mm-hmm. because I, I'm just getting over a Castlevania-induced depression period, and also I had Bojack recently, which is still waiting. Oh, so you don't want me to hit you back of depression right no, now? No, I'm just going to chill. Uh, I'm going to hang out a little bit, and I think the thing we should do is we're going to read a book this cool. week. I know... It's disgusting. Book reading, reading. literally, you know, having to be literate. Well, it's, it's next episode is going to get no viewers now. Oh, so what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. The book one. Uh, it's a, it's, a, it's very dear to my heart, my friend. It's <laughs> I think is the second best urban fantasy trilogy. Okay, thank you. Trilogy God. slash not trilogy because it's not a trilogy at all. Second best urban fantasy series on the planet, and it is Skull Over Your Pleasant the First oh, wow. by Derek Landy. That's fun, actually. Yeah, I've still got those books as well. So you've I got can, them. Yeah, I fantastic. Can, we're just reading the things. first one. What's well, that? We're just reading the first. Well, we can actually talk about the whole series if you can. I mean, I've only read the first one. I kind of, I do want to experience it at some point. But yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, no, cool, man. Well, absolutely. I enjoyed the first, first book a lot as first well. Book actually, so. Yeah, right. Be fun well, thank you all for there. tuning in. Thank you very much. Yeah. Always appreciate it. And we will see you on the next one. Yeah. Hopefully, the world isn't over by the time this gets uploaded. Yeah, it'll be fine, bro. Don't even worry about it. Don't even sweat it, my man. <laughs>